Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing great. Going on into the weekend. Uh, if you guys could subscribe here and you get notified every time I put up a new video. And you guys can also watch uh, the radio program I do with my guy, Leroy Horde. Every single weekday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We got a little heated today. We got a little heated talking about this Tua Tungavailoa story. I'm going to put that in there. Story that got dropped by CBS today. CBS's Jonathan Jones. And his story, big headline, says... Tua Tungavailoa has been mostly absent from Dolphins activities as Miami QB looks for next big contract. Subheadline, Tungavailoa has skipped most voluntary OTAs over the past month as the team prepares for him to play on a fifth-year option. All right, so this was the big headline here today. And the big, you know scope of this is the Dolphins are basically just like doing meetings and lifting right now. Um, this is not, they're not like even throwing passes or anything like that. That does start up on Monday, which is going to be an interesting line of demarcation for this off season for the Miami Dolphins, simply because Tua is on the record saying, fairly recently that he was going to go to OTAs. So if he deviates from this, even though it is voluntary, um, I do think it's an interesting signal with this, but here's what the article says. It says with the, uh, it says the Miami Dolphins will begin team drills on Monday as part of their voluntary organized team activities. It's unclear whether Tua Tungavailo will be part of them. Uh, Tungavailo has been absent for a large majority of the voluntary offseason work since the Dolphins reported on April 15th. Sources close to the situation have told CBS Sports that is in stark contrast to his first four seasons in the league when Tungavailo was present for most voluntary work. Sources believe that his absence is related to his contract status. Yeah, I would say probably. <laughs> uh, it says, like many players before him, Tungavailo is seemingly using his absence from voluntary work uh, as leverage for a new deal. He did show up to the facilities early during the offseason work, and the team captured him on the field on April 19th, but how long he's willing to stay away is unclear. Now, they start their team stuff on Monday, you know, the whole running the drills thing. Still voluntary, but uh, Tua did say that he expects to be there. At least he said that at his luau about a little over a month ago. Is this a big deal? Um, Here's what I would say. I think that there is, I think it's a big deal for this reason. If Tua feels the need to use this leverage or his representation feels the need to do this to show leverage, it could give some bearing to the idea that the team and Tua are far apart on a contract negotiation. And you do wonder um, how far does he take that into the situation? Because one of the things that I have wondered with Tua uh, with Mike McDaniel is like, hey, part of the benefit of being with the Miami Dolphins and being with a coach who is, he's admitted, has kind of restored his confidence, has put him in a good place. Um, what signal does that send? Uh, I mean, it kind of probably sends what Jalen Ramsey had said a couple days ago, does not pay Tua. Um, do you think that that gets put out publicly? It could have been jokingly from Jalen Ramsey, but you know, Jalen Ramsey, who once showed up to a camp in a Brinks truck to get paid, like, I'm sure, everybody wants to see their guys and their friends get paid. They've uh, they've obviously had a pretty tight relationship with him going to Hawaii for it and all that type of stuff. So I do wonder where this does put things if he doesn't show up. I am not going to rip Tua for not showing up to a voluntary workout if he doesn't. And I do think there's an element to this. If he does show up Monday to OTAs, this seems like the biggest non-story ever because very clearly Tua Tungavailoa has been working hard. You could all see on his body and him being the size that he's at, that Tua has been putting in work. Everybody has said it. He has gotten, if anything, he seems like he's doing more. He got himself a personal QB coach. He seems to be losing a ton of weight. This is on top of the guy doing jujitsu in years past. The guy very clearly works hard. Um, the other thing that I would say for Tua that he has that hasn't been seen from him at all is, man, this guy, I feel like 
has earned some equity with the organization and what they've tried to do to him in the past. Understanding that Brian Flores isn't here, but it's still the same general manager in Chris Greer who went after Deshaun Watson and went after Tom Brady and went after other quarterbacks that the coaches wanted and the owner wanted. And Tua stood there like a champ, took every question, never ripped anybody in the organization, never really made himself, made anyone feel sorry for him. If you did, that's that you know that was probably on on your own feelings of it of how gnarly that must have felt for Tua. But he does have a little bit of good grace built up into hey, I never made an issue when everybody was looking for new QBs under the sun, and the co- the coach had been rats off a ship on me. The thing that I do wonder, though, is the relationship with Mike McDaniel. These dudes are super tight, right? Like, this seems like a relationship where they have uh, worked well together. There has been a lot of, you know, respect between the two of them. Mike McDaniel had even said months ago that he expected Tua to show up to OTAs. That that was his expectation that Tua was going to be there. With intentionality, you know, I, I try to I try to keep myself as head of coaching, and um, and you know the contracts and contract negotiations, those things um, take time. You know, I, I do expect to it to be in OTAs only because um, you know my working relationship with with Tua, and for two years I've watched. Um, Tua um, gain some unbelievable residuals towards the the season Um, in that process. It's part of the reason um, Tua is who he is, is because he's always learning, never staying the same, and always working on his craft. And I know, um, you know, the one thing that he likes to do um, now in his life besides uh, be a kick-ass dad to Ace and Maisie is play football with his teammates. So um, that's what I expect. I don't put really too much thought beyond that. Um, I understand the business, but I also understand uh, my job with Tua is to make sure that his football is continuing to evolve and the best days are in front of him, which are both of our goals. So will the coach hold any ill will if Tua didn't go to a voluntary workout if he didn't which again we don't even know that he won't because it's not like it says he's been to none he hasn't been to the majority of lifting and meetings but like actual team activities where they're going to be on the field doing short stuff uh and there have been videos you guys have seen Tua being in the facility uh that the team has put out and the other thing is I think it was pointed out by Barry Jackson that Tua had reached out to the rookie receivers already and said they're going to get together to throw. So this is a man, not a man who's trying to stay disconnected from their team. Um, curious to see what Mike McDaniel, if, if that did happen, what he would say about it. Um, but ultimately, man, like for this guy, he has been nothing but classy. He's been nothing but the good soldier for the Miami Dolphins. And I think that if you have a problem with this, it's probably just because you don't think Tua should get paid anyway, which is totally your opinion and you're entitled to it. If you think Tua should be on a prove-it deal and you think this guy has the balls to actually not show up to uh, a, a, a football activity because he's so disgruntled with not getting paid even though he hasn't proven anything, fine. Let that be your opinion. However, I will say as an effect... Usually guys who play the good guy don't get the contract that they want if there's a contract dispute. It's unfortunate, but you kind of have to make things messy to usually get your way. You do. And we've seen that in the Dolphins. Christian Wilkins can be the A1 example. He didn't really do anything to you know, make his displeasure be known other than show up to camp and not do drills after doing a week of drills and making a point how important he was going to be, and he never missed a snap. And he played awesome, but he was gone. So the Dolphins really didn't face any immediate repercussions for that. Whereas you look at somebody like Xavier Howard, 
And Xavier Howard, you know, made a very public stink about this stuff on social media. Got paid. Got his new contract. Uh, Quarterback-wise, you know, you look at a situation like Kyler Murray, where Kyler Murray, you know, put uh, took all of his Cardinal stuff off of social media and made the music, but he got his money. Got his money and he got his contract. So there could be an element to his agent selling him like, hey, man, Sometimes you got to be a dick for, you know, three weeks before mini mandatory camp so we can maybe move the goalposts. Because what if the uh, negotiations, if the reports are true, they're not going anywhere, there's not any movement along, there's nothing really happening. If Tua were to show up and go to camp, yeah, he's doing right by his coach, which is maybe the most important thing because maybe this coach believes in him in a way and a monetary value that no other one does. But if you don't think there's going to be any rift, what's really the pressure of getting anything done if you're his representation? So that could be the thinking in all of this. But again, this could all be a big nothing by Monday. If Tua does show up, then this is a horse's ass report and it meant nothing. But obviously, if there is uh, an absence, if there is something even with Tua missing on a voluntary, it's not something I think you should be ripped by the fan base for, but it will send your, it will set your antenna up to be like, Oh, is this going to be a problem? Is this going to be something that when mandatory minicamp comes around in June and he's not there and to, it's going to be like, nah, go ahead, run your camp with Skylar Thompson, run your camp with Mike white, run your camp with whomever to see how it goes. Um, and see if that speeds things along, speeds things along. Because yeah, this is a this is a, you see the crazy money that quarterbacks are being paid, um, and you don't know like what is the number that this guy is is looking for. So while right now this is kind of like a eh, I'm not really sure if this is anything, but it does kind of you know raise your raise your eyes a little bit. And you're just like, uh, will this be a thing? I'm not really sure. Because I get it, I would get I, I I would get why Tua wants to go on the offensive a little bit of getting a deal done and not just assuming like oh no no it's gonna be all cool we're we're gonna we're gonna get this done because as charming as Mike McDaniel is, you know he's still one play away from getting his head spiked on the turf and you know his life changing so it is a, it is an important element when you think about all the things physically that he has been through. Um, you would understand why they, they, they may take some tactics to get this way. Is it going to buy him any favors with the fan base? Probably not initially for a dull time of the year where there's, you know, only Panthers hockey going on. Like I can tell you sports radio is probably going to go nuts with it. Um, is it going to mean the Dolphins are going to lose any less? No, because nobody here with their right mind thinks that two is going to get traded, cut or not be starting week one. And so do I think the Dolphins, like I saw somebody today saying, the Dolphins have eight and nine written all over them. And I was like, they do? Like with 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 this offense, with that, they, they maybe have eight wins in their first 10 weeks written for them. I mean, like, I don't know what, eight wins in, overall in the season, that's what you think? We, we got we to gotta have a, a little a dose of sanity when it comes to our reaction to stories like this. So, um, it's potentially, I guess the way I would put it, it's potentially interesting, but I don't know if it's, it's something that's, that's do. I definitely don't think it's something worth outrage or anger or any of that stuff yet. It's just like, all right, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll monitor the situation and see where we're at. But, uh, I, we're really, I don't think it'll know more until, all right, with team activities go and Mike McDaniel speaking to reporters, and he has to answer questions about this because they both on the record, right? Tua said uh, at his luau, he said that he expects to be at OTAs. And uh, Mike McDaniel said back in March, he said, I expect him to be at OTAs. If he's not at real OTAs, all right, then we can start thinking about what does this mean? Where is this going to go? And will they actually get a deal done? 